Percentile ranks and percentile points computed from sample data are commonly encountered in statistics. By the end of this video, you will be able to define percentile ranks and percentile points, explain their common uses, explain the relationship between these two functions, and describe relevant plots. This video does not go into detail about percentile rank and percentile point calculations. There are additional videos that demonstrate how to compute them. Suppose we have conducted a study involving 200 examinees. We could look at all 200 scores shown on this slide, but it would be difficult to identify any patterns or trend in the data. This problem only gets worse with larger data sets. It is much more helpful to condense the sample data into a few meaningful numbers that describe all of the important characteristics of the data. One such way to summarize the information is to create a frequency table. The first column of this table shows the unique test scores listed in descending order. It is easy to see that the minimum score is 20 and the highest score is 30. This range of values seems limited. Moreover, no one in the sample obtained a score between 0 and 19. The second column of the table shows the frequency of each test score. The most common score was a 27, whereas very few people earned a score of 20 or 22. The third column shows the cumulative frequencies. Frequencies are summed in a cumulative fashion from the lowest score, the bottom row of the table, to the highest score, the value in the top row of the table. Dividing each cumulative frequency by the total sample size of 200 and multiplying by 100 results in the cumulative percentage, which is shown in the last column. If we plot the cumulative percentage for each unique test score, we obtain the Empirical Cumulative Distribution Function, or ECDF. The ECDF is usually presented with proportions on the y-axis, but here I am using percentages. The black dots in the figure correspond to the information in the table. Notice how the ECDF jumps or has a step at each unique test score. The size of the step is the percentage of examinees with a particular score. An ECDF provides an empirical estimate of the cumulative distribution function, but other estimates are also possible. A percentile rank is the percentage of scores less than or equal to a particular value. This definition is very similar to the cumulative percentage. The equation for computing a percentile rank from ungrouped data is shown on the slide. We take the frequency of scores below the value of interest and add half of the frequency for the value of interest, then divide this quantity by the sample size and multiply by 100. We only take half of the frequency of scores for the score of interest because the percentile rank is actually the percent of observations scoring below the midpoint of the interval. An equivalent definition is that a percentile rank is a score's rank minus 0.5 divided by the sample size times 100. For this definition, tied scores should use the mean rank. I mention this equivalent definition because introductory statistics text will use one or the other of these two definitions. Percentile ranks have been added to the frequency table shown earlier. Notice how the percentile ranks are slightly less than the cumulative percentages. For example, for a score of 25, the cumulative percent is 13, but the percentile rank is 10.25. This difference is due to the adjustment applied to the percentile ranks to make it reflect the midpoint of the interval. The difference between the cumulative percentage and the percentile rank is evident when we plot the ECDF. As shown before, the black dots mark the cumulative percentages. If we change the black dots to be the percentile ranks, they move to the midpoint of the steps. This change is very evident for this small sample of data. If our sample had included thousands of observations, the ECDF would appear as a smooth curve and the cumulative percentages and percentile ranks would be much more similar. In education and psychology, test scores are often converted to percentile ranks to facilitate the interpretation of scores. The SAT is an example. You can see in the table that a person with a critical reading SAT score of 700 
has a percentile rank of 95. Therefore, this person did better than 95% of other examinees. Pediatric growth charts are a prime example of the way percentile ranks are used in medicine. Whenever a child visits the doctor, her weight is compared to a chart, and the doctor will determine if her weight is normal, above normal, or below normal. A normal weight would have a percentile rank of about 50. A percentile point is the value with a certain percentage of scores less than or equal to it. It is also called a percentile or quantile. There are several different ways to compute percentile points, and the most basic one is to rank the values from smallest to largest and choose the rank nearest p times n in order to obtain the 100 p percentile. This simple method is easy to understand, but statistical software typically uses more complex methods of computing percentiles. Returning to our example, we may want to know what is the 50th percentile? For these data, the 50th percentile is 27. 50% of examinees had a score less than or equal to 27. The 50th percentile is also known as the median or second quartile. To compute a percentile point, you are given the percentile rank and you must find the corresponding score. It is the inverse operation to a percentile rank. Let's look at a figure to see this more clearly. Here is the ECDF for the example data. When computing a percentile rank, you are given the value on the x-axis, and you find the percentile rank on the y-axis. For percentile points, we do just the opposite. You start with the percentile rank, and you find the corresponding percentile point. It should be clear that percentile ranks and percentile points are inverse operations. If you are paying close attention, you probably notice that the 41st and a quarter percentile and the 50th percentile resulted in the same value, 27. Why did this happen? Let's look at the figure again. These data covered a small range of integers, resulting in tied ranks for many of the values between 26 and 29. Thus, the steps shown in the ECDF plot are large, meaning that various percentiles have the same value. The good news is that this problem improves as the number of unique values in the data increases. Percentiles are often used to summarize data. For example, the first, second, and third quartile are a part of Tukey's five number summary and box plot. Percentiles tell us more about a distribution than the mean or standard deviation alone. Percentiles provide information about a distribution's location variability, and shape. We learn just about everything we need to know about a distribution from its percentiles. For our example data, the minimum was 20, the first quartile, or 25th percentile, was 26, the median was 27, the third quartile, or 75th percentile, was 28, and the maximum value was 30. This information tells us that 50% of the observations lie between 26 and 28. This two-point spread is fairly small given that scores could be any value between 0 and 30. Reducing the data to the five-number summary provides us with a lot of information about the data, and it is much easier to identify patterns from these five numbers than it is to visually inspect all 200 values. With a large amount of data, or data that has many unique values, it can be easier to work with a grouped frequency distribution rather than a frequency distribution of individual values. The group frequency distribution can be converted to a histogram to illustrate the data, and you can also use it to compute percentile ranks and percentile points. However, these computations are slightly different than the methods we've discussed so far because you must account for the data being grouped into intervals. This slide shows our example data as a group frequency distribution and histogram. For percentile ranks, we use the equation shown on the slide. It is similar to the previous equation for percentile ranks, but instead of assuming that the value is at the midpoint of the interval, we compute its actual position in the interval. That is, instead of taking half of the frequency at the value of interest, 
we take a frequency that is proportional to the distance of the value in the interval. For example, if the value of interest is 75% of the way into the interval, then we take 75% of the frequency of observations. Using the group frequency table of our example data, the percentile rank for a score of 27 is 44.125. This value is slightly different than the percentile rank computed from the ungrouped frequency table. The difference is due to a loss of precision when grouping data into intervals. There is also a way to compute percentile points from a grouped frequency table. For this method, you start with the lower exact limit of the interval of interest and move into the interval a fractional amount. Using this method to compute the median, we get 27.28, which is slightly different from the value of 27 that we got from the ungrouped frequency table. This difference is due to the use of a different method of computing percentile ranks. Percentile rank and percentile points are regularly encountered in statistics. We use them to summarize data and create meaningful test scores. We can also use them to illustrate data as an ECDF or use a grouped frequency distribution to create a histogram. There are multiple ways to compute percentiles and statistical software allows you to choose among them. Now that you have an understanding of the basic concepts, you will be able to read software documentation and choose among the various alternatives.